Mamado, 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 Mamado. Igbo men, women, youths together with august visitors and well-wishers from all over the world, drumming, rejoicing and dancing at the inauguration September 18, 2010 of the West African exhibit, also known as Igbo Farm or Igbo Village, at the Frontier Culture Museum, Stanton, Virginia, United States. A momentous occasion that buttressed the glowing roles of the Igbos in the foundation of America. Questions have been asked as to why the museum authorities dedicated the compound to the Igbos when former slaves came from many other ethnic nationalities in the West African coast. Mr. John Avoli, director of the Frontier Culture Museum, Staunton, Virginia, answered that question in an earlier chat with me. In the research uh, that was done by our Deputy Director Eric Bryan and many other consultants, what we know that the Virginia colonies at that time, uh, the majority of the uh, West African slaves that were here were Igbo, approximately 40% of them were. So in order to honor that ethnic group, much like we have done uh, to the honor of the Germans, the Scotch-Irish and the English, further contributions to the American frontier, the beginning of America, the blending of America, Ebo played an integral part in that history of America. Mr. John Avoli, Director, Frontier Culture Museum. And I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the Board of Trustees and Governor McDonald and all the officials and the Board of Directors, welcome here this morning. This indeed is the gayest occasion. It's been accumulation for this museum of a project that started long, long ago and about five years worth of work at the very end from the research period to where we are today, the construction of it. Yesterday evening was a momentous occasion here at the museum. Uh, the reconnection of the homeland uh, to here in the United States, in the OB, with the presence of Justice Cochran and many other dignitaries. I think it was a very touching time, especially for me and many other peoples. It truly brought together the two continents here crossing the Atlantic Ocean. That was very, very monumental. Mr. Avoli there made reference to a reconnection ceremony, which was a very surreal and solemn ceremony, and which was also tagged handshake across the Atlantic. And that ceremony certainly will form the subject of another production. Meanwhile, back at the inauguration of the West African exhibit, the Igbo Farm of the Frontier Culture Museum at Staunton, Virginia, it was all speeches, recognitions, and performances, as should be expected. Our new chairman, Mr. Paul Vaines, and I will recognize Mr. Vaines at this point to bring some remarks. Paul? In his welcome speech, the new chairman of the Frontier Culture Museum, Mr. Paul Vays, described the connections that were symbolized by the event of the previous day and also the inauguration of the Igbo form as multifaceted. There is a connection of two continents, Africa and North America. There is a connection of two countries, Nigeria and the United States. There's a connection of two states, Virginia and Anambra. If I mispronounced that, I apologize. There is a connection of a small city in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia to the cities such as Nashville, Tennessee, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Illinois, Toronto, Canada, 
cities in California, and numerous villages in Nigeria. But more than just geography, there is a connection of cultures which leads to a connection of people. So we thank all of those that had anything to do with bringing this long anticipated wonderful day to fruition. We welcome and greet you all with open arms and know many connections and friendships shall be made today that shall last a lifetime. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Baines. As any organization has in leadership, you also have a foundation. And as these walls and also these homes sit here, what makes it important and strong is the foundation that it sits on. The Frontier Culture Museum also has a foundation. And the foundation's responsibility here, to put it blank and frankly, is to raise money for these projects. All of the money that was raised for this project is privately funded money, which is quite unique in today's environment. And I'm proud to recognize here this morning to bring welcome again our chairperson, the president of the foundation, Mrs. Rich Capps. Mrs. Capps. Today we have taken a big step in including a missing link in this story. Donations that were given here for the exhibit were not all monetary, as we've said. Much was done by volunteers. Puddling mud with bare feet. <laughs> Making loaves of mud to build these walls. Hauling and dumping supplies and mud. Planting trees. There were all ages that came. Some were groups of Ebos that came from all over the country to be a part. Some were school, troop, school children on their field trips, and they loved playing in the mud. <laughs> all of last summer, we had the Stanton High School football teams here, and they worked all summer long. Uh, my husband and I engaged some of them with questions of what they were doing, and how the buildings were going up, and it thrilled us to see that they were as good at explaining the process of building to the visitors as our own paid staff. Far more happened out there in the mud than building huts. I believe that there will be many people who come here to visit in the future who will tell their friends and children, I helped build this exhibit. They and you bought into the program. You worked on it. And now it belongs to you personally. We can all be proud to be here today and know what we have built by our donations of money, time, physical labor, and I might add spirit. This is an exhibit that is unique in this nation and even the world. And it tells our story here at the Frontier Culture Museum in Stanton, Virginia. The Foundation thanks you all for all you have done. It's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Lacey B. King, Jr., the Mayor of the City of Stanton. I'm also proud to tell you he's a good friend of mine, Mr. King. I'm welcoming people from all over the world. Uh, I'm welcoming people of culture that uh, we're on the ground floor of the building of this country, so it is, it is really a real pleasure for me. And, and on behalf of City Council, I bring you greetings and congratulations from the City of Stanton on this special day of dedication of the Ibu Village. The Ibu Village is a wonderful and fitting reminder to all of us of the huge role that you serve in building this country and this great country that we call America. Uh, and again, uh, it's, it's so important that we, we continue to uh, remind ourselves that we all came here from somewhere else at some point in time. Uh, I'm a little bit English, I'm a little bit Irish, I'm a little bit German, and uh, the only thing is, is my, my last name is King, but not mine, so I'm not the 57 uh, variety. But, uh, uh, 
Again, it is my honor and my pleasure to welcome you here on this great day. And I, I've had some, several conversations this morning, and I think this thing is is bigger than you can even imagine. And I think in the days and months and uh, years ahead, we're going to see an awful lot of people from all over the world come here just to see what we've done in the Valley of Virginia and the little old city of Stanton. And again, welcome and God bless. Mayor King, thank you for the remarks. I'm proud to say that I'm 100% Italian. <laughs> and, and I can tell you that all my Igbo friends, my Igbo friends, you either have some Italian in you or we have some Igbo in us. <laughs> Also, it's my pleasure to introduce James Lyons. He is coming to us from the great state of Maryland. He is the Secretary of Higher Education to bring greetings from the governor of the great state of Maryland. Sir. And I bring you greetings uh, from my wife, Jocelyn. So, uh, Patricia, you can report that, that I brought greetings from her. <laughs> she had a medical emergency and was not able to be here. When I talked to my grandson last evening, he said, Granddad, did you really drive three and a half hours to get to that event last night? And I said, yes, grandson, I did. And I intend for you to drive three and a half hours. <laughs> I said, because I intend to bring all of my grandchildren here to this village uh, so that they can experience a rich culture and not grow up as I did, thinking that my life began and ended in the New Haven Public Housing Project. <laughs> This gives us an opportunity to understand that your roots extend far beyond that. Yes. But there's another very personal reason why I would represent the governor here today, and I mentioned this last night. On April 28th of 2007 in the city of Los Angeles, the Enri community inducted me and my wife into the Enri community of the Anambra State. And they said they were doing it with love admiration, and an open heart. And that night started my wife and I on an Igbo journey. That evening, that very special evening, my wife was given the name Neka. Neka. And I was given the name Namdi. Namdi. So for Neka and Namdi, God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I know you're here. There comes Dr. Jack. I think uh, his American name, Dr. Jack from Juco. Jack, uh, Jack has been a major, major player in this, and he will be given recognition later, but uh, he's also a very famous professor at the University of Western Kentucky. Jack has some special introductions. Jack. Thank you very much, John. Yes. It is Igbo function, but we are ever so grateful to Governor B for what he did for Ted and I when we went to Igbo. We are also grateful to other governors that accepted uh, Dr. Anapenzi when he visited. Before I introduce the guests of the Anambra State <coughs> Government, I would ask Professor Omemma in a Chuku Madubike to please come and say a brief word. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Cha 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 Igbo friend! Oh yeah, one big one. Cha 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 Igbo mamanu! Mwanu! 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 of Igbo land. Yes. So I want to thank all of you that have made these events possible. Indeed, but today are celebrating a certain kind of reconnection. We are rediscovering our lost ring. It is a different kind of reconnection. It represents our world tension, our worldview that has expanded all over the world. 
in the 16th, 17th century, when this event started, it was found out and recorded that the Igbos were the single largest ethnic group in Nigeria. And so its representation here today is not a mistake because we still remain the single largest ethnic group in Nigeria. Yeah. And so if that single largest ethnic group is represented here today, Africa can the world be said to be represented. Say that again. Yes. So I want to thank the Frontier Cultural Museum for this wonderful project. I'm happy to be part of it. I think it's the beginning of a rediscovery. The Igbos are a very, very uh, vulnerable group. We've gone through seven disasters in our history, beginning with the slave threat, the colonization, the um, Biafran war, the indirect rule, then the post-war policies, including Christianization, that defined the Igbo psyche. They have defined the Igbo man. And has made him a better person. A person who is very conscious wherever he is, and a person who is not just an Igbo person, but a person who wants to be in the world person. And that is why you see so many of us here today. Avale and Co, I want to thank you once more for what you are doing for our people. We remain grateful. And from today, <coughs> the history of the hunter and the hunted will be completed. Thank you very much. I'd like to use this opportunity to invite someone else to speak. And this is going to speak on behalf of the only governor who responded to our call and was supposed to be here but can't make it. And the only governor that has responded in a real way by sending people to come. I cannot begin to tell you how pleased I am that one of them is here. And I will also use now to thank all those people who came from Nigeria. All of you I can't name now. But may I now call on the representative of the governor, chief, himself, an honorable commissioner for information and culture that we so much need, Chief Maja Umen, could you please come? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning, or good afternoon. I didn't have time to say good afternoon. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to be here with you. I'm here to represent my governor, the governor of Alhambra State, His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, who is unavoidably absent. And um, my governor asked me to thank the director, the Navoli, who is very He's a very good friend. He's been to a number of states and uh, we really did a lot of things together. And we're really happy to see him, as well as the mayor and uh, the foundation members and board of trustees. For all you are doing for our people, and this your um, historical reconnection uh, between the United States of America and uh, the Nigerian state, especially the Igbo extraction. We appreciate your deep sense of history we appreciate what this holds for our children and the future relationship between the United States of America and Nigeria. The Igbo society, the Igbo community in Africa remains um, a very distinct race, a very wonderful um, species of people, especially in the Nigerian nation where they have had to play a very vital role in the emancipation of that country for um, the contributions of the Igbo man to the development of the Nigerian state. It's such a tremendous one that it is worth from time to time to mention them. Now the first president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is an Igbo man. The 
first Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is an Igbo man. The first Executive Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is an Igbo man. The first Commissioned Graduate Officer of Nigerian Army is an Igbo man. The first Cardinal in the Roman Catholic Church is an Igbo man. And the first saint we are going to get in Nigeria is also going to be an Igbo man. It's important to mention this because when we got our independence from the British government in 1960, the Nigerian government had to be fitting care to convey the Queen. It was the Igbo man who was the first millionaire in Nigeria that lent the Nigerian government in Rolls Royce to convey the Queen. And so you can go on and on and discover that the first black vice chancellor in Africa is also an Igbo man. I can go on and on. So we made great contributions to the development of our country. And it's good that the American government is recognizing this. Because it's reflective in all we are seeing and witnessing today in the United States of America. Yes. Where people of equal attraction are holding their own, yes. competing effectively, and excelling in most cases. Yes. It's a race to be proud of, and we continue to be proud of you. That's why His Excellency the Governor of a number of states said I should be fiscally present here to commend you for the way you have been living here. I am exceptionally proud of you. Because if you have not been doing well here, our brothers here wouldn't have recognized you as a great people, as a people set apart, as a chosen race, and a good people of the So today, so today, I thank the government of America, the government of the state of Virginia, and um, the Frontier Culture Museum, and all of you who have contributed, especially my brothers who have had to come here to generate this mark to put in the raw labor to get this place working. His Excellency is a part of this project, has asked me to make a donation of Other speakers at the inauguration of the Igbo Forum included Dr. Anna Quenze, special consultant to the Frontier Culture Museum on the Igbo Forum project. Thank you very much. Um, I have a message from Ohanes Ndibo, um, our leader, Ralph Ndi, Ralph um, Uweche, the ambassador is not able to come because of emergencies. So he sent me a message to deliver on behalf of all Igbos. Let me put this event in perspective. This singular act of replicating the social cultural heritage of Igbos amounts to finally giving African descent who were part of founding fathers of America a resting place. They can now call a home. This village is a home for all Africans, African Americans all over the world. It symbolizes the lives of Africans that were lost during the journey of, um, towards building this great country and making it the greatest place on earth. And Lawrence Wilder Jr., Special Assistant for Education to Secretary for Education, Commonwealth of Virginia, 
who also performed the ceremonial cutting of tape to declare the West African exhibit, also known as Igbo Farm, at the Frontier Culture Museum, Stanton, Virginia, formally opened. <laughs>